It's been said those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. Pastor Alan Jackson says the consequences are even worse. He says if we forget our past, we could lose our freedoms. Take a look. Alan Jackson, senior pastor of World Outreach Church in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, says as a nation, we are living in the midst of a dividing line in history. He says the freedoms and liberties our country provides were founded on biblical principles. As a result, God has consistently blessed America. In his book, God Bless America Again, Alan encourages us to remember our nation's Christian heritage so we can continue to experience God's favor. And Pastor Alan Jackson joins us now via Skype. Pastor Jackson, thank you for being here. Can you hear us? Good morning. It's a privilege to be with you. Awesome. Well, you say that America's heritage from our legal system to our culture is rooted in Scripture. Can you give us some examples? Sure. I mean, when William Bradford and the separatists, the Puritans, you know, came to this continent, they were looking for an opportunity to worship God without the interference of a state church or the king. And they made tremendous sacrifices when they came to our shores so that they would have that freedom. And from that place until today, our legal system, our educational systems were all founded upon a Judeo-Christian worldview. You wouldn't know that, though, would you? <laughs> really? No, we've lost that perspective. <laughs> yeah, what are, what are, though, some of the ways that God has blessed America? Well, the liberties that we have and the freedoms that we have. You know, we are a nation of immigrants. We're not bound together because we look the same or we have the same accent or we share the same heritage. We were bound together by an ideal. I mean, it's Jefferson stated in the beginning of the Declaration of Independence that all men are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that we acknowledge that we had a creator and that he has put a dignity within each of us. And our nation was founded with the freedom to allow God and what he put within us to be a part of our culture. You know, I think today we feel so powerless. We want better politicians, but we don't need better politicians. We need a church that is more aware of the head of the church and God's perspective in our lives and what it means to honor the Lord. If the church will wake up, our nation will get healthy. Amen. Well, how do, how do you reconcile our spiritual foundation in America with America's troubled history with slavery? Well, you know, the fact that we have a Christian heritage doesn't mean we're a perfect people. We talk about slavery in our nation as if somehow we are a unique example. But if we, if we step back a bit and look at the, the history of the world, you know, people groups have oppressed other people groups for as long as we've had organized society. And slavery is reprehensible. There's no excuse for it, but it's not a uniquely American malady. And we have taken it and used it as a lever to, to manipulate political gains or economic opportunities rather than repent of our sin, forgive those who oppressed us, and then find a way to live together under the truth of Almighty God to help one another so we can be stronger. It's not a uniquely American problem. It's a human problem. You know, ultimately, our problem isn't the color of our skin. It's the color of our hearts. And if we will do something about that, we will see God in, engage us and expand our freedoms and liberties. You say the problems America faces are not political, scientific, or medical. So what are they? Well, I think the root of the problem is spiritual. The outcomes will be seen in the political arena or the scientific arena or the economic arena. But if we don't have a heart change, a politician or a scientist or an economist isn't going to fix our problems. You know, in 2 Timothy 3, it says there'll be fierce times in the last days. And it doesn't describe um, climate change or scientific or economic problems. It describes 18 attributes of the human character that are going to deteriorate. And that's not something beyond the walls of the church. That's happening within the church. We've been asleep. We need the, to listen, to allow the Spirit of God to wake us up. We've been uninvolved, unconcerned. And if, if we will turn our hearts to the Lord and humble ourselves, get our Bibles back out, begin to read them again, teach the younger people. We have an assignment to teach the next generation the truth of God's Word. We've abandoned their moral development to the schools or to the television or to the Internet. We have an assignment to do that, not just the children in your home that share your DNA. We have an assignment for the younger generations to help them learn to honor God, to fear God, to respect God. That's what made America great. And I believe God will bless America again if we will turn our faces to him. 
you know, there's that saying, as the church goes, so goes the nation. And uh, mm -hmm. right now our nation is uh, in turmoil. We don't know which way it's going with the, with the presidential election. How should uh, the church, what role can they play right now? Well, I think we've got a powerful tool in prayer. You know, it's, it's not our last uh, tool of last resort. It is a powerful response. We need the truth to be told, what's being whispered in the, the shadows to be shouted from the housetops, what's been wrapped in the, the cloaks of deception to be made visible in the light. And the, the, the power to make that happen resides in Almighty God. We are not powerless. And if I could say one thing to anybody that's listening, you may think your voice is small or maybe your resources are not great and nobody cares about your opinion, but the creator of the universe is listening to you. And if you will speak to him, cry out to him, ask for his mercy, to let the truth be told in our nation, to let righteousness be exalted again, I believe we will see God's hand intervene on our behalf. Amen. I do too, Pastor. And you can learn more by getting Pastor Jackson's latest book. It's called God Bless America. Again, it's available nationwide.